Arthur J. Schultz said, no other single custom contributes so much to keeping the family functionally Christian as the home devotionals or the family devotions. It is as ancient as Noah building an altar for his family. Abraham gathering his household before him for prayers and David teaching young Solomon true wisdom. But don't forget Job. Uh, Job led his family in devotions as well. Uh, it is as modern as the many Christian families today who regularly worship in the family circle of their homes. For Christians, family worship is a practical necessity. It is the best way they know of letting the world, letting the word rather, it is the best way they know of letting the word of God, the word of Christ dwell in them, that is the family, richly. Uh, Holy Father God, we thank you for the privilege of family worship and uh, family devotionals. And uh, Holy Father God, we pray that you give us all your grace, your strength, your anointing, and the power of your Holy Spirit uh, to continue daily until the day we die with family devotions. Help us not to skip it. Help us not to make light of it. Uh, for as uh, this gentleman has stated, it is absolutely necessary. And help us to remember that. And then after we have family devotions, help us to pray without ceasing throughout the day and help us to encourage each, each other to do that. For your glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Bible reading today is from Psalm 44, 9 through 16. But thou hast cast off and put us to shame and goest not forth with our armies. Thou makest us to turn back from the enemy and they which hate us spoil for themselves. Thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat, and hast scattered us among the heathen. Thou sellest thy people for naught, and doest not increase thy wealth by their price. Thou makest us a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and a derision derision to them that are round about us. Thou makest us a byword among the heathen, a shaking of the head among the people. My confusion is continually before me. 
the psalmist said, and the shame of my face hath covered me. Have you ever been there? For the voice of him that reproacheth and blasphemeth by reason of the enemy and avenger. Dr. Matthew Henry will help explain this passage because this is the Word of God too. He goes on to say, the believer must have times of temptation. I do know some Christians who say, oh, I'm never tempted with that. I've never been tempted with that in my life. I don't know what's wrong with Christians who are uh, uh, battling these temptations. They're liars. Matthew Henry says, we must go through temptation, affliction, and discouragement. The church must have seasons of persecution. At such times, the people of God will be ready to fear that he has cast them off and that his name and truth will be dishonored. But they should look above the instruments of their trouble to God, well knowing that their worst enemies have no power against them. But what is permitted from above, God allows it for a reason. Remember that no matter what you're going through, uh, no matter how many enemies have surrounded you, God allows it for a reason for your good. And we need to give him praise and give him glory as one of the popular songs uh, tells us, blessed be the name of the Lord. When he gives and blesses and when he takes away and chastises, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen, somebody. Uh, that's the Job mentality. Though he slayed me, yet will I trust in him. Join me in praying for government leaders. They need prayer, don't they? Uh, they need the church to be praying for them. Or we will all become men and women most miserable in this country. If the church does not rise and pray and keep on praying, We can't depend upon just Billy Graham to pray for the nation. We all need to pray for this nation that we enjoy. I've been to many countries and there's no greater country on earth like uh, America. There's no country like America. Nowhere. We enjoy blessings that the world, many people in the world, billions don't even know anything about. So if you want to keep on enjoying uh, those uh, pri privileges and blessings, you need to pray for whoever is in office. For First Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for our president, President Donald Trump, 
We thank you for our past presidents, be they Democrat or Republican, and we pray that you would save those who may be lost, uh, revive those who may be saved, uh, and lead God and direct them to do good work to help this country and to help other countries. Uh, we pray for salvation, spiritual, family, life blessings. We pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and insight for President Trump, Vice President Mike Pence, First Lady Melania Trump, Second Lady Karen Pence. <coughs> Uh, pardon me, presidential aides, chief of staff for the National uh, Security Council, Keith Kellogg, leaders of federal agencies, general services administration, administrator, uh, Timothy O. Horn. We pray for all state governors, these same blessings. Today, we pray for Mississippi Governor Phil Bryant, we pray for all city mayors. Today we pray for Aurora, Colorado Mayor Steve Hogan. We pray for U.S. Senators, all of them. We pray for North Dakota Senator Heidi Heitkamp. We pray for all U.S. Representatives. We pray for particularly today California Representative Mark D. Saulnier. We pray for all police chief Chiefs, these same blessings. Uh, today we pray for Cle Cleveland, Ohio Police Chief Calvin D. Williams. We pray for all sheriffs. Uh, today we pray for Fulton County, Georgia Sheriff Theodore Jackson. We pray for all military leaders. Uh, today we pray for Admiral Michelle J. Howard, and we do pray that President Trump and uh, uh, General Mad Dog Mattis uh, would follow through on this uh, order of uh, stopping uh, homosexuals and transgenders uh, from going into the military to disturb uh, the peace and uh, order of the military and uh, we pray that they would be that they would quit themselves like men and cut out the foolishness uh, in our military so that we can be ready 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 uh, so give them the strength to follow through on that and holy father god we pray in the name of the lord jesus christ as uh, Howard is the commander of U.S. Naval Forces in Europe, uh, U.S. Naval Forces in Africa. And Holy Father God, we pray for all law enforcement uh, people across this country and military around the world that help keep the peace. Without them, we would have utter chaos. And we thank you for your chain of command and your uh, calling these people into their respective ministries. <clears throat> uh, pardon me. And Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for all leaders of nations around the world. We pray for Ecuador's President Lenin Moreno. We pray for salvation, spiritual, family, life, protection, blessings upon uh, these leaders, as well as wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and insight. For your holy word tells us, Ask, and ye shall receive. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. And Lord, we pray now for all church leadership, be they Baptist, uh, Bible, or Methodist, or Charismatic, uh, Pentecostal, or whatever. We pray for all Bible-believing Christian groups. We do not pray for uh, cults, uh, such as the Mormon Church and uh, Jehovah's Witness. We do pray uh, for them that you would open their blinded eyes and unstop their deaf ears. 
and save their souls. But all other Bible-believing Christian groups uh, who believe that Jesus Christ is uh, God and not the brother of Satan and other such foolishness. And today we pray for the leaders of the United Methodist Church, Bishop Karen uh, Alivito, Bishop Cynthia Moore Koikoi, and Bishop Latrell Easterling. Uh, we pray that you would lead, guide, and direct these uh, leaders in the way that you want them to go. We do pray for the salvation of people who are religious but lost. We pray uh, for other Christians who have been discouraged and defeated. Uh, we pray that you would revive them again miraculously because we know that you can make these bones live again. We pray for current events around the world. Lord, you know about these things better than we do. We are not informing you. We're just praying as you've commanded us to, to help these people. Please comfort and save the parents of Charlie God. And Lord, we pray that you would comfort them as only you can. Uh, what a sad situation. We pray for the one person killed and six people injured in a ride malfunction uh, at the Ohio State Fair uh, that you would comfort this family as only uh, these families as only you can uh, one of those uh, uh, strange situations when you go out for fun and then fun turns into tragedy and uh, this is why Lord we all even when we go out for something fun and something simple uh, we all need to be sober-minded, vigilant, prepared, and on point uh, so as to not experience something that should be fun turning into a tragedy. Help us all to do that. Uh, we pray for the families of the seven Christians killed by Al-Shabaab terrorists in Kenya, knocking people going door to door. Uh, to question and see whether or not people are Christians and when they answer yes, they are killed uh, And it's a, it's a tragedy and it's sad uh, Lord that you've commanded us to go out and to witness and uh, uh, To tell people about Jesus and we won't do it But these people motivated by their false religion go and do this uh, evil have mercy and grace upon us and our backward, our backwards ways, and our backward ways, rather. And Holy Father God, we pray for the families of the 26 people killed and 13 people injured in a Taliban bombing in Afghanistan. Comfort these and help these as only you can and save those who are lost. We pray for the families of singers uh, Chester Bennington and Barbara Weldons, who died this past week suddenly, that you would comfort them throughout this week and save the souls of the family members. We pray for the families of the three Israelis and three Palestinians killed in Israel and for the hundreds who have been uh, injured in clashes and foolishness. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, indeed, for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the families of the 10 people who have died in a human trafficking uh, situation in Texas, uh, which is still ongoing and such a sad situation. We pray for persecuted Christians around the world that uh, you would give them grace in their trying hour or in their dying hour as you have so wonderfully done down through the years and prepare us against that day. Give us grace against that day when we will be uh, so persecuted here in America. For I believe that day is coming. And Holy Father God, we pray now for the media we pray for ABC News Senior Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas, co-anchor Elizabeth Vargas, 
and uh, she, and we pray for Elizabeth that she would overcome uh, her alcohol, alcoholism or drunkenness, uh, that she would be what she uh, used to be. And we pray for senior Washington correspondent Cecilia Vega, that you would save the souls of these people and help them to do their job uh, correctly and for your glory, your praise, and your honor. And Holy Father God, now we pray for the prayer requests that come into us uh, here at Gospel Light Society and Gospel Light House of Prayer. And we pray for Marie. Please give the authorities who are investigating serious criminal uh, network uh, in her town uh, insight, insight and discernment. Please give them the resources they need to help the women and children who are caught up in it. Please bring support for her and her son who is also caught up in these uh, events. Give them protection and security and save all the people involved. We pray for uh, Iki Muno in Nigeria. Help her to come to know you as Savior. Have your Holy Spirit to work mightily in her life. Open her blinded eyes and unstop her deaf ears to understand the gospel. We pray for Leo in Malaysia. Please bless him with a clear visa, registration, and permit to visit his family in Bangladesh. We pray for Brother Agray for strength, power, wisdom, and grace for your work. Uh, have more souls to be uh, one to your kingdom, and please bless him with a car for his ministry. Uh, we pray for an anonymous prayer request. Please uh, bless them with financial blessings and good health. We pray for Roshane. Please help her to do well in all her ex exams and work. We pray for Dillip. Please work things out in his favor. Give him a complete turnaround in his life. We pray that you bless him with health, wealth, well-being, and a greater career and healthy relationships. <clears throat> and Holy Father God, we pray for Kanisha. Uh, please get her out of the bad relationship uh, she is in and break all soul ties she has to it. We pray that you would do that in the lives of many people in the church today who have gotten involved with devilish people or pagan people or ungodly people and uh, they're getting caught up and sucked in uh, to this foolishness. We pray for Arlene. Please bless her with a great place to stay. Bless her with good health and save her soul. More importantly, we pray for Raju. Please bless him with the job you want him to have. And Lord, we pray for Marie. Please deliver Marie and the people in her care from the problems they are facing. Deliver them from all harm and demonic presence. We pray for Angelica. Please be with her. Uh, we pray for Katerina. Please improve, develop, and deepen the relationship between her and Dijon. Make them a strong Christian couple and get married soon according to your will. Now, Holy Father God, we pray for the people who have trusted you as Savior through this ministry. We pray that you'll help these to grow in the faith and be the Christians you want them to be. Help us to be the disciplers of the disciples that you want us to be. We pray for Melwert. We pray for Mahesh. We pray for George. We pray for Clems. We pray for Isaac. We pray for John. We pray for Franz. And we pray for all of the others. This is just a few uh, on a long list. And we also pray for those who have recommitted their lives uh, to you, Lord Jesus. Somehow they heard uh, this poor preacher preach the gospel. Uh, or, or heard uh, something else from our ministry. And uh, they're already saved, and uh, they decided to uh, come back to you and uh, uh, rededicate their life to you. And we don't even give an invitation for this, but uh, we thank you, Lord, ever since the beginning. People who have heard the gospel around the world have said, hey, I'm already saved, but I just needed that. 
and I'm under conviction and I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. And so, Lord, we thank you for that and for them, and we pray that you'll help these to stand strong in the faith. We pray for Susan. We pray for Musisi. We pray for Abua. We pray for Samuel. We pray for Prosper. We pray for Ishwar, and we pray for Francis. We commit these souls into your hands. We commit our souls into your hands. Let your will be done in our lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, and for his sake, amen. Beloved, our devotional reading today is titled Footprints in Song by Dr. A.W. Tozer. Dr. Toza goes on to say in this devotional titled Footprints in Song, one of the serious weaknesses of present day Christianity or evangelicalism is the mechanical quality of its thinking. A utilitarian Christ has taken the place of the radiant savior of other and happier times. This Christ is able to save. It is true, but he is thought to do so uh, in a practical across the counter manner uh, paying our debt and tearing off the receipt like a court clerk, acknowledging a paid-up fine. A bank teller psychology characterizes much of the religious thinking in our little gospel circles. The tragedy of it is that it is truth without being all the truth. In modern Christians, if rather modern Christians are to approach the spiritual greatness of Bible saints or know the inward delights of the saints of post-biblical times, they must correct this imperfect view and cultivate the beauties of the Lord our God in sweet personal experience. He goes on to say, in achieving such a happy state, a good hymn book will help more than any other book in the world except the Bible itself. A great hymn embodies the purest concentrated thoughts of some lofty saint who may have long ago gone from the earth and left little or nothing behind him. To read or sing a true hymn is to join in the fact, he allow me to uh, make that clear, because I think we're going to sing a hymn this morning in light of this devotional. Let's sing. Um, uh, Peace like a river 
Is it well with your soul? How about that? Dr. Tozer goes on to say, a great hymn embodies the purest concentrated thoughts of some lofty saint who may have long ago gone from the earth and left little or nothing behind him except that him. And that's a beautiful thing. And may I say to all of you saints out there, all of you Christians, I'm adding this, leave something behind for the saints who are coming behind you, especially the millennials. To read or sing a true hymn is to join in the act of worship with a great and gifted soul in his moments of intimate devotion. It is to hear a lover of Christ explaining to his Savior why he loves him. It is to listen in without embarrassment on the softest whisperings of undying love between the bride and the heavenly bridegroom. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for reminding us of the power of the old hymns of the faith. Some very ancient and some very old to us. But he's right. There's something powerful about the old hymns. The hymns have carried us a mighty long way. And we thank you, Lord, for using your servants, as he said, who left this earth with very little to leave behind but that old hymn. Some died in poverty, but they left that hymn behind. And so, Lord, help us to remember that this morning our switching up to a hymn this morning in midstream uh, may turn out to be disastrous. Uh, to our audience and to us. But Lord, uh, we're trusting in you and grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to sing an old meaningful hymn of the past that ministers to our heart today. <clears throat> In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake, amen. Beloved, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, uh, I assure you uh, in the words of my mother, uh, many years ago, you don't know what you're missing. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. That includes you. This is the gospel in a nutshell, according to Dr. Curtis Hudson, who is now home with God. A soul winner from his heart. For God so loved the world. That includes you. I don't care what you have done. I don't care if you're, you're high on meth, you smoke reefer, you a prostitute, a whoremonger, a drug dealer, a gambler, a snake oil salesman or whatever. God loves you. Others may not love you. Others may have forsaken you, but God is right there. God created you and he loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his name is Jesus, that whosoever, that means you, anybody at any time, believeth in him, should not perish but have everlasting life. 
believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friend, wherever you are in the world, do it today because tomorrow is not promised to you. We're all going to die and we're going to die soon. So you need to get ready. You need to trust Christ as your savior. If you bought life insurance, you need to get eternal life insurance by believing on Christ. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 13, that if thou, that if you, put your name there, that if Bill or Barbara shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart, your heart, that God hath raised him, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Do you believe that this morning? Can you believe that this morning? Thou shalt be saved. Believe that he died for you, was buried, and rose again. Verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. It's a guarantee. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and pray and ask him to save your soul. Believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, shed his blood, his pure and holy blood for your sins, was buried and rose again. And pray and ask him to save you. He will change your life beyond your wildest imaginations. Follow me in prayer, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a wicked sinner. Yes, Lord, I may not have sinned like so-and-so, but I have sinned. I have broken your commandments. For Jesus Christ's sake, forgive me of my sins, of lust, of adultery, of fornication, of lying, of living a lie, and uh, wash my sins away in the precious blood of Christ. As I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to truly repent of my sins past and to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Now beloved, if you just trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ and there's nobody better to trust in, if you just believed on Christ and prayed and asked him to save you and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, the infallible Word of God, you are now saved from sin and hell. And right now you might have a tear coming down your face. Uh, you might feel a little bit relieved, like a burden has been lifted. Or you may still feel some tinges of guilt. You don't go by that. You go by what God's word says. God has never lied to anybody. And he has not lied to you. Yes. Salvation from hell and gaining a home in heaven is as simple as what I just told you. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the family of God, dear friend. I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life. And that is trusting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your 
newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said uh, in St. John 10.9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall be saved. She shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you. <clears throat> Is my prayer. Which